There are four members of the NIB group of clockmakers, and the senior one of the four clockmakers was Samuel Nib, who was baptised on the 16th of December, 1625, in Claydon in Buckinghamshire. His cousins were born in, also born in Claydon, Joseph Nib in 1640, with John, Joseph's younger brother, in about 1650. A further cousin, Peter, was baptised on the 30th of July, 1651, in Farnborough, nearby. No one has been able to find out where Samuel was apprenticed, where he learnt his considerable clockmaking skill. You can see this in this wonderful cupola clock. And the same is true of Joseph, but John was apprenticed to his brother in Oxford from about 1664, aged about 14, started them early. There's a lovely complex little miniature striking lantern clock made and signed. Johannes Nib Oxen Fake It, 1669. But this was when John was still an apprentice, and so in theory he was unable to sign clocks. And so I like to think that he made this clock for his own personal use. So every morning he used it, so the alarm woke him up, so he was in work on time. This lantern clock was produced by John fairly early in his long career, in about 1685, and it's a superb example of this simple lantern clock form, modernized and brought up to date with a long pendulum and quarter striking. The top section here of the clock uh, just goes back to the origins of lantern clocks with the central finial on top here, the bell held on these supports onto the four pillars, the, the four pillars having another matching finial on top, and then to the bells and the mechanism are protected um, behind. You've got these lovely frets and you've got the lovely baluster base with beautiful engraving on each side, uh, wheat chief ornamentation along the top, and then this beautifully designed fret on top with wonderful flowers and everything. It's a design as well as beautifully engraved in detail and beautifully executed with all these very tiny swirls beautifully delineated in the design. You can see the little quarter bells hidden away inside uh, underneath the big hour bell here um, and the, the mechanism with the hammers coming up just masked behind these lovely frets. So this is a lovely traditional lantern clock. It's got the brass front plate with a brass uh, chapter ring on it, with the, every one of the minutes with the big marker dot, and then it's marked every five minutes, five, 10, 15, 20, etc. The inside ring has got the quarter hour markers here, and this lovely signature, Johannes Nib Oxen real statement and these beautiful engraving, these lovely flowers and the, the swirls and the shapes. It, it's a beautiful design. Uh, the nibs had this wonderful eye for detail and form. And just look at the, the shape of the hour hand here. The, all the facets and the little spiky bits to make it look interesting and important and see how well it's set off, the, the blued steel against the brass behind. Even the minute hand has got this wonderful detailing here in the centre. Uh, no expense was paired on the detail of anything that Nib or his brother did. They're, they're beautiful hands and I say you can spot a Nib clock across the room by the quality of the hands.
So we're just coming up towards five o'clock. The, the bell here is one of the biggest I've ever seen. And so if I put my fingers in my ears, you'll know it's working. You wouldn't miss that striking, would you? Here you have the quarter train with the two hammer blows for the two quarter bells pivoted down here and the springs just coming out of the picture. And so when it comes to half past, you'll see the, the clock strike the quarters. you can see the, the count wheel mounted on this, uh, the great wheel being driven. And so that it knows then where it is in relation to the hands. So. At the front here, you've got the escape wheel with the anchor pendulum and a long pendulum ticking away, uh, seconds pendulum. And then the going train then has the motion work to, for, to driving the, um, the hour hand from the minute hand. You've got the train here driven by the chain drive from the front. The middle train here is the quarter train and you can see the, the fly um, and the two hammers and then the big bell is driven from the heavy weight at the back here. Again you can see the fly and the, the whole of the mechanism. So it's a very simple mechanism. It's very simple to put together because of the movement plates just slotting in and the top and bottom ones screwed in with the finials and the lower finials used as feet in this in this case. So you can see the anchor escapement and the recoil that every tick the clock actually runs very very slightly backwards before the impulse um, changes the direction of the pendulum and it swings back the other way. So every tick, you can see the escape wheel just going backwards that very, very small amount. The anchor escapement is also known as the recoil escapement, and you can see why. <laughs>